the piece. Okay, called a, a sort function. Okay, sort function. Then you can you can then you can imagine because of the one loop gives an imaginary path, right? So if you exponentiate this one loop to orders, you get a phase vector. So this is the reason I argue. One, if we can factorize this global group, then we, we will get, get additional strong phase from this global group. Then once we can do it, then TMD maintains its universality. Okay, because we factor because this uh, global group couples the different hadrons, but now I can factorize it now into this uh, global phase. Then the then the TMD remains its uh, universality. So the generalized the KD factorization applies to JM and low QT. So the third piece of information like that, fine, there's a breaking effect, but I can handle it. And the, 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 the effect of this production uh, uh, breaking is a strong phase. Okay, now, because- Let's see, I thought you said, <coughs> in all the lines you drew, how did it relate to B physics? B physics from yeah. oh, here. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. I think you first mentioned B physics and then went through- yeah. Uh, I'm sure wait, 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 wait. Okay. In fact, uh, there are many clues. I have to, I will show all the clues in front of you. Then I I tell you why we come to our conclusion. Baiting. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. So now here comes comes to the the, the pion because I always ask why pion is special. Okay, it's to pion. As I said, I was attracted by this uh, subject through the B physics. There's a this is a very famous puzzle in physics called the B to pi pi decay. Okay, you see, you can see that uh, I collected the, the uh, data here and also PQC prediction here. <coughs> this puzzle is still not solved. Okay, so you can see that uh, if there are two pi in the final state, the it compares uh, data and prediction six <coughs> times, six times difference. Okay, if there's only one pi the difference okay, reduces three times. If there's no pi consistent. So this is, so far, this puzzle was not, not understood yet. Another puzzle is called the B to pi k puzzle, which also involves pi -O. So naively, we saw the, the uh, dark sphere symmetry in this mode, B plus minus, it came to the pi zero, k plus minus. And the dark sphere symmetry in this B, uh, neutral B dk should have the same sign. It should have the same sign, naively. But the data show that uh, they differ very much. And uh, this uh, uh, observation has been pub published by Bell Group in Nature. So how to understand the puzzles here? People argue it may be due to the new physics or due to the QCD effect. But if, but if new physics, then, okay, new physics can resolve the puzzle in the B to pi k decays, but how about the B to pi pi, pi rho, and rho rho? These decays are three dominant. Now, but if it's a QCD, QCD effect, then how can you differentiate pile and the row meson? What kind of QCD effect can differentiate pile and the row meson? You can see, when pile number is larger, the deviation is larger. Quite strange, this is quite strange. In fact, we started from this puzzle. Then, then I just, then I check the literature. If the pile is, is really spatial, then the Pion involved puzzle should also appear in other places. Okay, let's check it. D meson decay. Then I learned this from Pion Chen. Okay, then uh, on their work, okay, this is a uh, copy from uh, Haiyang's paper and uh, Jiang Zhenwei's paper. You can see that once a pion involved, okay, this is the, the X beta, this is the seal from their paper. The, based on the so called topological amplitude penetration, you can see that when the pion involved, the deviation is larger. 1.4, 2.24. This is also so-called D to pi pi puzzle. Okay, so they even they include the symmetry breaking effect. The pi pi puzzle persists. persists. There are more pion involved puzzle. This one is pion hadron uh, production. So we can measure the charged particle pro uh, production in hadron collision in RIC and the OLHC. Then we can measure this final state particle PD spectrum. Then we can parameterize this spectrum into these two terms. One exponential, the second is a power term. Then these are, all these are the, some free parameter. All these are free parameter, and T, all these are free parameter. Okay. Then we fit this spectrum to the data and see what happens. So 
So if you fit to the KO in the proton data, you can see that the green line represents the power term contribution. And uh, this red line represents the exponential term contribution. So it's uh, less than 100, less than 1%. So it means that in the KO in the proton spectrum, the curve dominated by power contribution. The exponential contribution is almost zero, almost zero. But if you fit to the high on data, the situation is different. So in a large PT region, yes, power term dominates. But we go down to the lower PT region, the exponential term dominates. Exponential term dominates. Quite <coughs> different from the KO in the proton data. Then we can see this uh, difference more obviously from this chart. Okay, I can define the ratio of the power term over the total contribution. So as we can see, for the KO and the proton data, yes, the power contribution almost 100%. Then come to the pion data, around 20 to 14%. So it means that the exponential contribution dominates. But these two data are very uh, particular, peculiar. You can see that uh, this data also produce the pion in the final state. But they are from the gamma proton, EIS, or gamma gamma. In this process, it, the data back to normal. It's dominated by power, power contribution. Quite strange, right? Quite strange. But not this data, because this data involve fewer agents. OK, so I want to show you some hints. Then hopefully, after we collect all the hints, then we, see, we come to our conclusion. So this is, uh, this is a, a, a remark on a common feature. So all anomalous processes demand the KD filtration. For example, the endpoint severity in a heavy uh, flavor decays, like BDKD decays, or the uh, low PT uh, spectrum, like uh, the, the uh, lepton pair, uh, low PT uh, lepton pair in Julian, or the low PT uh, hydrogen uh, production. Okay. All anomalous processes involve at least three hydrogens. So this reason why the this data have a normal behavior because they have few hydro. Okay. We need we need a two hydro in the final state. <coughs> one hydro, uh, two hydro in the in the initial state. One hydro in the final state. But it, here, these two part, this for these two data, we have few hydros. And uh, the above are necessary condition for global coulombs to appear. So, I try to uh, lead you to this kind of. Uh, uh, observation, okay? We need the global rules. All anomalous process involve pions. So do we really understand pion? Pion is very strange because pion is bamboo goes stone pose. Okay, so here we have known the common feature of all these uh, anomalies. In fact, there are more, more pion involved anomalies. Here I just show you four, but in fact there are more. So pion really, really strange. So the common feature show that Yes, we can have global gluons. But why global gluons couple anything, anything to do with the pion, right? Why the pion is so special? Okay, here, I argue that. Because the uh, pion is quite unique. It's different from the ordinary hadron. Because of uh, the confinement, okay, ordinary hadrons, as uh, the quark bound states must have finite mass. Because you confine this uh, quark QQ bound bound state in the finite space time. So you have a finite, finite mass. This is fine, okay, no contradiction. If massless Nambu Goldstone boson is amateur, that means that if Nambu Goldstone should, uh, should not have mass, and uh, if this Nambu Goldstone boson is amateur, no contradiction either. Okay. But pion is very strange because it's Nambu Goldstone boson and also it's a QQ bar bound state. Then we have the conflict. We have conflict. So if pion is Nambu Goldstone boson, it should not have mass. But it's a QQ bar bound state, it should have mass. So it's raw. It's conflicting. These two rows are conflicting to each other. I'm John. Uh, why does QQ power bound state uh, need to have mass? Oh, because it confines <coughs> the motion of QQ bar within a finite space time. But it could also be a number of bosons, but nothing prevents. Uh, Massless bamboo goes right. Well, to be well, the, the pion, okay, yes, mass is because there's a uh, long deal of a bare core mass. <laughs> Okay, if bare quark mass is zero, then yeah. you... In the current limit, yeah. Yeah, then, yeah. then, then, then the size is massless. Right, I yeah. just say that the QQ bound state does not need to be massive. Pion is an example. 
Yeah, yeah but, but how do how you understand this? Yeah, but, uh, kinetic <laughs> energy and potential energy is cancelled. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to talk about it. Very, yeah. very, uh, well, you question question is, how, does, how is ghost on boson maintained with confinement? Yeah. Uh, is there a yeah, contradiction? Right, yes. It's not a contradiction because okay. Gosson theorem is general. Right. However, with confinement, it's yeah. very strange. I, I think that's his point here. Yeah. Yes. But, but in what way? Okay, maybe you but, explain. Well, I don't the know. cancellation of kinetic energy and potential energy is coming from the Gosson theorem, which is correct. Right. But how does it actually work? I, I think that's uh, part of the yeah. question. Okay. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite a subtle. I think Kerr Bay is a subtle. <laughs> it's I don't want to come across the inside, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, what's the difference between K and I? Uh, Bill Kaon is a heavy mass, a heavy quark called a strange quark. Strange. So it's a, it's a con yeah, it's also some uh, conflict by the natural theory, not as high. Strange as mass, yeah. right, except for the requirement. Yeah. <coughs> Certainly, this uh, puzzle, this uh, conflict the rule is not uh, completely uh, resolved yet. So, so some people propose to use different flux states to meet different uh, rules of time. For example, you can use uh, a leading flux state, QQ bar. So, uh, argue that the QQ bar is tight enough to lower the confinement potential. And the higher flux state, like a QQ bar, Oolong, okay, to give it a soft cloud. And uh, so these people argue that it needs to But I disagree, I disagree. Because uh, the, they, once you use the flux state, it means that you have used a part of model. When you use part of model, it means that we have to get a confinement effect. So how can we manage something, nothing to do with the confinement, to handle the problem of the confinement? So this is strange. So anyway, this is a problem has not solved yet. So what I can say, what I, what I can say is that pion is quite unique, quite unique. So then we can argue that maybe the strong global effect from this uh, soft cloud, okay, so it's a high flux state, and all those puzzles due to global phase. So it means that, so I try to connect this uh, strong global effect and the pion together, okay, because pion is spatial, okay, then, if this is really the case, then I can use this idea to explain all the puzzles. Okay, so let's start from up to the puzzle in BBK and BBK. So this is uh, the, also this is a B to pi pi uh, diagram. So you can see we have three main uh, hadrons involved here, three hadrons, B, pi, pi. And uh, this uh, global group, indeed the couple, is uh, uh, ma the, the meson here and also the B to N uh, transition form factor. So they, couple these uh, uh, three body uh, together. So these are global gluons. So if we, if we argue that global gluons is important, okay, from the pion, then I can associate a phase, global phase, as, as I argued, that all the fraction of, of global gluons global gluon give uh, this additional phase. I just associate this additional phase to the, the, the amplitude here, to the amplitude here, okay? Then to see whether we can explain data, then you can see we can explain the pi k puzzle. So when the, this, uh, you can see if uh, this uh, uh, global phase is zero, they have our PQC prediction have the same sign for these two uh, dioxide asymmetry. But once the turn around is a global phase, then uh, this one, okay, pi zero, the, the charge, one charge BDK, you, you will flip sign, okay, with uh, some value of the, this uh, global phase, minus 0.5. But the phase is cannot, cannot be calculated. Cannot be calculated. It may be calculated in that discussion, but not, not by us. No, no, no. We, we cannot do it. So we, this, I just want to show that uh, maybe this phase can resolve all the puzzles. If this is the case, it's already highly not treated. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, what is the role that panel play uh, in order to, for you to uh, have the excuse to <laughs> introduce the phase? I didn't understand. Because the uh, we have observed that uh, the, all the puzzles involve pion. And all the puzzles involve at least three hadrons. So I want to connect these two information. Right, but if you go to the previous slide. Yeah. Uh, so in what sense can I say that, uh, that you treat pion and kion differently than you are allowed to introduce the... Oh. Uh, here, in, okay, here, in fact, in this calculation, we also associate the phase with the KL, also associate, but it, it turns out that uh, it's not so important. Okay. Not so important. Okay. Because uh, the, it's, okay, I have to come to more detail. In, in this decay, the, the key amplitude is called the color 
surprise amplitude C. Mm -hmm. we, if we have C, it's a pi on here. Okay. This, uh, this, uh, this, this place is a pi. Yeah, and the k-on is here. And then we found that, uh, as, as, I, as I show you, the, the, the gobble gluon really important when the pi on is takes this, this place. Yeah, take this place. Okay. Right. So this is color surprise to C. So for the D, D, uh, D decay, same. Okay, we use a similar uh, gobble phase, minus 0.05. Then you can see that uh, now, D to pi phi puzzle is resolved. Also this one, pi plus eta, this is quite uh, significant, because in other models, you can see the, the huge difference. But after including uh, this uh, gobble group, that become consistent. Okay, finally. Finally, let's put all the clues together. The next we need to do just assign a face to the Feynman diagram. That's what we need to do. Same face. Okay, now let's uh, again come to the solve calling solver frame. So okay, QT is a lepton page, a lot of momentum, and the temperature is a lepton page, very max. But I define this uh, kinematic variable. And the theta one, okay, theta one. This is the angle between the these beam one and the z axis. So this is theta one related to the boost of calling solver frame. Because if there's no, no boost, then the B, B, uh, momentum P1 will uh, be along the uh, Z axis. This is the definition of a kinematic uh, uh, variable. Okay, now, this is a linear order diagram that I show you for finite QT. I em emphasize for finite, for finite QT. If there's no QT and we don't have the third party, then everything will not occur. So we should, should have something back to normal. So this is uh, the linear order for finite QT. We have the Third part of here, third part of here, or they can. This third, third part of can exchange with uh, this other uh, electron pair. So what we need to do is just uh, then we sum over the global group. So because the first day we, we had factorized global group, and we found that uh, uh, we can factorize global global group in this way. And then this uh, circle, okay, uh, means that the eta function. So and uh, for it, for the, the third diagram, we found that uh, we have additional collinear group emission here. So it means that this global dimension will appear at a higher order in alpha s. So in our terminology, we say that this global divergence is regarded as the next leading logarithm. So in our uh, simple estimate, okay, we can neglect the global phase on this uh, uh, diagram. So we just associate the global, global phase with the first two diagrams. So we just uh, assign cosine SE to the first two diagrams, okay, because it's real part, which place here. In the B decay and the D decay, it's a sign, sign part, sign term, which you contribute because you need to uh, change the interference between different, different amplitudes, and then it's, it can be done by sign term. But here it's cosine term. Okay, now, so you can see, this, the first term is the normal term, which, you, which respects the uh, Lanton relation. And then the, the second term is the deviation term, because when S E equals to zero, this term will vanish. Okay, so we can calculate the full uh, coefficients associated with the full uh, the uh, angular distribution. So sigma zero, sigma one, mm -hmm. sigma two, sigma three, as a, and as I said, uh, the S one is the angle between the uh, beam one and the Z axis, which is a uh, proportion to the, uh, the, the boost of the coin solver frame. So it's a proportion to QT squared. Yeah. So you can check that when S equal to zero, yeah, lambda mu nu d uh, have this in, uh, expression, and they obey the Lanton relation. Okay. So we have, we have only one a free parameter, which is called the face. Okay, now this choose these are typical uh, values for the kin kinematic variables. Central, uh, central mass energy, 194. QT about 2 GeV, Q, and uh, so that's test. We found that uh, when the global phase is uh, pi over three, the number is about 0.9, new 0.2. All these are consistent with data. So then we just choose this uh, as the, uh, this uh, parameter for our global phase. Then we can predict the QT dependence. These are data. So lambda is indeed a round one. And the new grows with the QT. It's a deviation. Okay. So just one free parameter. <coughs> but it extends forever? Uh, forward also asks the same question. Uh, my answer is that no, it won't stand forever. It won't. Okay. This, uh, because we, we, we believe that when QT become large, then it's collinear fractation which works. Once there's a collinear fractation, no such business. Global globe will not appear. 
because collinear declaration must hold so far, so far, because uh, F, after the efforts of so many physicists, we know collinear factorization always works. Yeah. So in the large, large QT region, you, then we can apply collinear factorization. Then there should be no global pool law. Then the, the, we, we, we should not see this deviation. But this is, intuitively speaking, this is relatively large QT already. Uh, not very large. Three G is not, not, not large. Not large. Later part. Right, but it's already part. far into the usual perturbative regime. Whereas there's no, you have a one parameter fit and it's still yeah. going up. Right, up to this, uh, yeah, the region we consider. Because uh, I, so yeah, for as a single question. So in the low QD region, we, I know how to, how to do the calculation. In the high QD region, I also know, because in the low QD, we have the KD factorization with global phase. In the high PT, we have collinear factorization without the global phase. But what's the middle? What's the transition energy to change scale? I don't know. So, yeah, I can tell the tell you the results in these two extremes. The middle part is always most difficult part. Okay, so then let's compare our proposal uh, proposal with the vacuum effect and the ball model function. So, like a vacuum effect, global Coulomb causes a factorization breakdown, but the, our breakdown of the effect comes from the soft cloud. Okay, it's a provided by the pile, not by the QCV vacuum. And the vacuum effect is flavor prime, but global group effect is strong only from the pile. Certainly, this is from our argument. We argue that the pile is unique. Then compared to the ball model function, pile transverse degree freedom introduced by small QT. So that's the reason why that the, the deviation uh, must appear when in the finite QT. When QT equals equal to zero, when QT, oh sorry, when QT uh, equal to zero, we don't have the deviation. We don't have a deviation. So in fact, this this advantage is quite a natural. It's not like a, a ball model function uh, pro proposal. In fact, they, this advantage comes from the penetration because we use the uh, use the sort of intrinsic uh, extrinsic QT. Yeah. So so this a this a transformative field introduced by small QT. So global Gulo, okay. Our proposal come based on the nature, the, the is a go Nambu goes long nature of the pile. But ball model, certainly how to differentiate the ball model proposal or Nambu goes long nature, we can measure the PV bar. I have to explain the reason. Then if we're talking about PV, uh, PV bar, then we certainly we can we will we can ask whether any available data for PV bar. Yes, that's the one, the CDF, because CDF is a PV bar machine. And uh, they also measure the Lanton relation. Okay. So if a Lanton relation is respected, these two curves, because they use the different um, parameterization, different coefficients. So if uh, this relation is respected, A0 and A2 will be equal. So you can see the data. Basically, they are equal. So they claim they don't see any uh, deviation. But certainly, their data is measured at a large Q, the Z pole. Okay. And uh, their PT is quite large. That's, that's why I call a large PT, 80. It's a large PT compared to the low PT here. So when I show this plot to a board and say what he can say, he can argue, oh, the data here appear in a large PT, and we know large PT, for large PT, collinear factorization works. So there should be no deviation. Okay, so his proposal still survives. Then I ask, how about here? <laughs> okay, 4 GV or 3 GV, consistent, right? No violation. And then he said, oh, this is a large data uncertainty, so we can ask you. Okay. So let's wait, let's wait. So that's the reason I make a proposal to the J Park. J Park can do this major PV bar, Jiangyan. Let's measure uh, PV bar as the J Park. Then in the low <coughs> PV region, then we can tell. Oh, with a P bar beam or what? Yeah, they have a secondary beam. They can, they can have a P bar beam. <coughs> okay. So, this is uh, the summary. So violation of Lanton relation is one of the pion involved anomalous data. So yeah, there are many pion involved uh, uh, anomalies. And uh, so the global Coulomb effect leads to the phase factor, okay, every to the, uh, all the factorization, which could result several pion involved puzzles. Okay. So uh, we have a result of BDK, BDK, and uh, also this uh, uh, pion involved Jiryang. And uh, we propose to measure an important PV bar Jiryang, okay, positive discriminate the BM on the Google Store nature. But the furnace uh, theater side, okay, 
we can uh, we try to uh, understand the pion hydro production. I mean, the, why the the uh, hydro, why the pion uh, spectrum is dominated by exponential term uh, in the low PD region. Right? So we we try to use the same uh, mechanism to understand this. <coughs> yeah, our next topic. Okay, thank you. Yeah, let's go back to uh, Julie's question. The chaos is still very similar to the right? right. I mean, the masses, everything's masses, if the part mass is all zero. And it's, so whatever mechanism which makes pi on particularly low also makes the chaos quite small and it's dark, right? <coughs> so uh, if it's not a full, will the chaos be giving a half of the effect or something? Do you think that if it's, you know, if it's indeed uh, the cloud or, or higher yeah. box space and so on, the mechanism? Right. So, so we, 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 all, we do expect that there's some global effect from the chaos. But uh, because, uh, as I said, uh, the chaos is uh, the finite uh, strange quark mass. So it's the, I guess it's the, the global effect may not be as strong as in the pile. Mm -hmm. So people so ask uh, if we measure the chaos uh, in uh, induced Julian, what, what will happen? I would say, that the, maybe there's a deviation, but deviation should be small. Should be smaller. Should be smaller. smaller. Should be smaller. Not, maybe not as small as for PP or PP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May, may not be as small for PP, but <laughs> maybe it should be smaller. But, uh, I guess uh, the different way to phrase this is that you never mentioned the pion and chaos mass in the whole formula. So you can show the behavior as you approach the Goldstone limit. That would support you. Uh, this slide is included in the talk of, I presented at Riken. I said uh, I save uh, I remove uh, ten slides. <laughs> Let's say the content the information. <laughs> so yeah. what's the simple answer? Do you see it? The simple answer is that uh, I can find a model which depends on the pion mass. Okay. This model describes the intrinsic uh, KD distribution in, 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 in a hadron. So if this hadron could be raw mass or could be chaos, could be pion. Then the, the, the this distribution is controlled by the this hadron mass. And I can show that once, because I say that I can factorize the global Boolean factor out, so I can propose a universal global phase factor and convolute this universal global factor with this intrinsic KD dependence, which depends on different hydro uh, mass. Then, after doing this uh, convolution, I can test uh, how the, this uh, global phase effect depends on this hydro uh, mass. And I can show that uh, when the mass approaching zero, like pi on mass, the mass, that this effect becomes ma maximum. I can show that. But uh, I can still ask this way. <coughs> um, the kion has two components. One of it really is like a pi on. <coughs> so rather than just mk squared and pi squared, you know, I, I think most of us here don't have intuition of the Glauber gluon. Mm -hmm. and, and in the end, you introduce a one parameter fit. That's the gist of it. So I think when Cafe says it's a half the effect, mm -hmm. It can be asked this way, saying the K on H3 has half a pi on it. Light one versus the whole bill. Certainly, some people also uh, ask uh, whether it's possible to calculate the phase directly. Because here I use uh, treat the phase as a free parameter. But in fact, the phase can be calculated because uh, it, it has an operator definition. It's, uh, it's uh, the vacuum uh, ex ex expectation value of the four worst links. Can you write Yeah. It's a. Uh, I can try. I, okay, because uh, this uh, it, it should depend on the transverse momentum. So let's go to the impact from the space. We can it's defined as like this way. We have a first worst line, yeah, and another. This on the say uh, minus direction. Another worst line here yeah, in a plus direction, and it's a it's a worst line. Uh, orthogonal to each other but separated by the uh, impact on the B. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the uh, Wilson line. Then we take uh, the vacuum expansion value of this uh, Wilson line operators. This is the definition of the global phase. Those are all Wilson lines? Yeah, all these are Wilson lines. Certainly they are the, a vertical link at infinity, but I, I don't need to show it. Yeah. So in principle, and then, you, you know, we, we, you know the, the Wilson line definition. Right. You know, but do, you, do you need to put them in the, in the pile states or just in the vacuum? Oh, vacuum, because I have to this already. So I, I, I say that uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a universal phase factor. So this reason why the way to ask whether I can show that this phase depends on the hydro mass. When hydro mass approaches the current limit, for example, we can get the maximum the global phase, uh, global effect. Yes, that's, that's the case. So I can define this universal 
effect and the convolutor result. Uh, say some 